And uh, yeah, welcome to the session for to quarter nine of the RCDI GIS trainings. We've covered a variety of materials in, in these, um, with all of them avail being available, all the recordings available on our GIS hub. Uh, the training today uh, is focused on public GIS resources that may be useful for a, a small water, wastewater, stormwater system. Uh, how you can view those, access them, potentially get them integrated with your own maps. And everyone on the call. Um, right now, I believe we've worked with you, we've done data collection, you have maps right now, and I'm going to turn off my camera so it goes quicker here, but um, we've all worked with you, you have online maps that show your, your water inventory, wastewater inventory, storm water, we drill in your water mains, you can access those maps securely. Oftentimes we'll put on things like parcels, municipal boundaries. Um, or other other pretty simple relevant information that's useful to look at. Um, today we're going to look at a couple more options that may or may not be interesting to you. Um, and just to start out, I'm going to share my screen. Um, and th this is what we normally do with the system. This is the kind of end product that we use. This is a, a water system up in Maine, not too far from wade and will this is caribou main in the water system we mapped um, this one's pretty simple it just has the, the water data on it uh, no parcels no you miss municipal boundaries um, and i don't know how you guys work maybe there's times where you do have to research different maps or data um, maybe once a month once a year but um, in some cases maybe some of that data could get integrated with these maps so the gis could be your one-stop shop I know up in Holton, you guys have uh, another mapping program with, with the city that I, I would would think includes a lot of this information and in, in the mapping system that you have with them is integrated with that as well. Um, but uh, maybe you could talk about maybe some of the ways that you use your maps then too. But I'll start out with a simple, um, a simple example, and this is Monroe County, I thought we we're gonna have folks from Mount Pocono here and welcome to Andrew from Hazel Township, not not too far from here. But this is just a simple map, it's available at the county. So if you'd Google Monroe County GIS, um, this is one of the resources they have. And at the county level, these can vary. I'm gonna show a couple examples of what kind of information is available at the county level. But generally anything that you see here online that's publicly available, in a lot of cases, we could get this data in move it over to your your program then too like we showed with caribou uh, for this one there um, I, I just wanted to show you an interesting way you could use something like this um, here they have municipal boundary lines we're zoomed into mount Pocono, so i don't see those but they have all the parcels um you know pretty simple you can click on a parcel and pull up some some basic inf information about that point Uh, yeah, it's loading slow. Nothing too interesting here. We got an address, a map number, a township number, and the owner's name. Uh, we can usually pretty easily find parcel information. Sometimes they're more detailed than others. Other times we just have to ask the county for them and they'll hand that kind of data over to you. Um, especially if you're a, a water wastewater system in the county, they'll give you that information. Um, but what's kind of neat, neat about this example, why I brought it up, and I'll zoom into the wastewater plant, but they offer several different years of the imagery. So if they're for, for whatever reasons you want to check out, you know, see the, the comparison of the imagery over the years, you can do that. So this is 2015 we're looking at here. Um, the imagery is okay. You can kind of see things, but you can see the different facilities at the wastewater plant, but then you can zoom in that they've had a bunch of work done over the last eight years. Um, and then you flip to 2023, you can see the changes there, the better imagery, and you can see the, the I don't know, the, the new stuff they added here. And I was hoping John would be on to, to talk about it, but uh, that's what they have here. Up also Mount Pocono, they have spray irrigation fields. And so I don't think and, and it's in this area here. I don't think they were started in 2015, but if you want to go back and remember what things look like, you can do that. And fast forward to 2023, you can see all the different paths here where they have all their uh, their irrigation fields and you know some kind of tank right here but just kind of interesting to, to see the, the land changes um, separately I just noticed that if you want to maybe track changes with uh, I don't know industrial buildings or if there's reasons you'd want to 
search back and look at things. Now here's 2015. Whoops, and we'll compare that to 2023. It's 2015, nothing over here. 2023, there's some new development. So um, generally we can find imagery from, I don't know, 1990, even older than that, if you'd want to see changes over time then as well. I want to show you that maybe a, a better example of a county website. This is Tioga County in Pennsylvania. Um, you know, you, you get to their page, they're going to highlight their county. You can see all the different townships and boroughs involved. I'll zoom into Wellsboro. On this one, they got a lot more information that's uh, available at the county level. And so, I, again, counties can vary with the information they put out. On this one, um, I guess some interesting things that the county is showing would be sewer outfalls. There's a couple up here. This one has some really good parcel data that is a bit more detailed. So this one, especially if you've done some uh, lead service line inventory, this has like the year the home was built, the owner, addresses, uh, sales date, sales prices, when the homes were built. So in the case of lead service lines, if it's built in 1901, there's the possibility of, of lead that was around then. Um, it, it'll let you know whether they're on public sewer water. This is, I don't know, it looks like a pretty complete type of parcel information. And again, if the county manages this, you want that information on your site and, and we can't find it, generally all you gotta do is ask. And, and, and we can help you put it on there. They also have some parcel labels. I think it just gives owner names and you know some kind of account number in the acreage, it looks like. What's pretty simple too is um, hydro features. So you can get river streams, lakes. You can see, I don't know, some kind of creek here. Lakes are highlighted. Um, if that's ever useful to you, we can add that kind of stuff into your maps as well. If it's available, and I've done this a couple of times, but um, right away, so if, if that information is available, the right away, this doesn't have a pop up, but sometimes I can tell you what kind of right away it is or what the purpose is there. We got county boundaries, uh, where the courthouses are. The system has fire hydrants publicly available, which we probably have that information anyway. Um, census information, cemetery locations. We have a better example of this later, but this may be useful to you, but different soil types. Uh, this isn't the best example, but, but it's on here. And then they have a couple different imagery options going back to like 2020 compared to 2022. So just information like that. This county, we work closely with them before, so we share all their all our GIS data with them. They have a separate map that they give to all the utilities up there that, that does include some of this information as well as um, the, the public information that um, would be shared more privately. I'll move on. The, the county I live in, uh, they do things a little differently. They have a parcel map, but then they also have this page. It's more of a map gallery for things that are more specific. So I don't know if I want to know where the disc golf courses are. I can open this map. They have a comprehensive plan available. It was interesting. I, I tried to open this, but they asked for a username and password, so I wasn't able to access it. But uh, th this, yeah, this has some typical information that a county may have at the GIS at the GIS level. And a lot of counties, unless you're really rural, have GIS departments that manage this information. Um, any questions so far? Comments? Does anyone does anyone ever access these kind of sites to pull up information? Um, is there anything useful to you other than like the, the information that we have on your maps with the uh, the water and wastewater inventory? Yeah, um, I don't know if this is going to pertain to anybody else, but locally, um, we're working with the Holton Water Company, and they are trying to 
utilize their information with the local fire department um, so that the, the department can look at a fire situation, pull up the GIS, see the flow rates on any hydrants that are available, see the impacts around um, locally. If there is a fire um, on Route 1, it, it tends to heavily impact the flow rates to the businesses that are there and can cause some low pressure alarms to go off on the um, on the uh, sprinkler systems that are in that service area. So the fire department will be able to regulate the flows on the hydrants to try to prevent any system alerts that could occur. Um, can be very useful in those situations. Okay, yeah, thanks for sharing. And yeah, I guess with this session, we're looking at how public data can help help the utilities. But then the opposite can be true too. A lot of times you guys have information that could be critical and useful at, um, for local government, for county government, for police and fire departments. Um, and those are things, and I don't know how closely you all work with them, but in some cases, we, yeah, we're happy to share that information um, with whoever, as long as you guys are comfortable with it, if you wanna give them the hydrant information with any kind of relevant data with those hydrants that could be useful for the, um, the fire departments, we, we'd be happy to share that. Um, you know, we could put buffers around those hydrants um, to see what the fire coverage looks like. I don't know, you know, whatever that distance is, um, to, to see if there's any areas that, and do that kind of analysis to see if there's any areas that are missing the fire coverage or maybe where one needs to be put in. Um, for yeah, for yeah, so our our data that that we collect in the field can be useful to, to other folks too. So every county, Seth, is different. Yeah. It was, I don't know if that was a question or a comment, but yeah, yeah, they, well, they that, can that, be that was different. A, it was a question, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're in uh, Portland, uh, whatever county, like Portland, Maine, is, it's probably going to be different than some of the counties in northern Maine. Yeah. Um, I mean, some of those counties in northern Maine might not have any data at all. Um, I guess I live, I, I don't know, like a, a medium-sized county. Um, so there's a GIS department. I don't know how large it is, but I mean, we have th this gallery here. That's okay. I was thinking it was going to be little better than what they're providing. Um, Tioga County, Pennsylvania is small, but I mean, they, they put a lot of information out here. They have like a GIS director and then I think one other person. But yeah, so it can vary. If you're in like, if you look up like the County of Philadelphia, um, their GIS department, like it's huge and they have a ton of information out there. But yeah, it all depends. I, I, at a minimum, and I won't say that, in a lot of cases at the smaller end, there's at least parcel maps out there. Um, and, and sometimes maybe they don't have a GIS department, it's an assessment department, but I know in some counties in Maine, we couldn't find parcels, but mostly everywhere you can at least get parcel data. And then I'm, I'm gonna show a couple examples of like information that's out there at the state level that would include features that are within the county that are available too. And it's- And how it's, you can- <clears throat> Sorry, Seth. Maine's, oh, Maine's a little bit different than than most states, um, where county government is it isn't as robust. Um, typically, it's a municipal or city government that's taking on this within the okay. state of Maine. Um, and then the state of Maine itself has a GIS department that's gathering that information and housing okay. it for everybody to access. Yeah, so, we'll, we'll look at that and. Yeah, generally the smaller towns we work with, not, not, I think maybe Caribou is different, but um, smaller towns aren't aren't generally going to have a GIS site, but they could. But if you're a larger town, if you're, I don't know, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, I'm, I'm sure they have their own site. Portland probably has their own site. Boston would have like their own site. And so there, there's different levels. Um, and Pennsylvania counties are bigger, or I guess more robust, so they, they generally have a site. Massachusetts, I think, would be a little bit different. So yeah, it depends where you're at, but... Um, yeah, I'm, we'll move over to the state level then too. Um, so this isn't a map, but Pennsylvania has POSDA, Pennsylvania Spatial Data Access. I'm gonna show Maine's, they have something similar. But they have a ton of data, they, they categorize it. Um, I don't know, so, I don't know, we'll go into local government. So they, they kind of separate things from counties um, up into like, 
different levels. So it's, it's kind of half unorganized here. You have to know what you're looking for. You can do searches, but I don't know if you're in Montgomery County, here's where you can find your county government, county boundaries, uh, buildings, address points, street center lines, parcels. Uh, for Monroe County, where I pulled the, one of the first examples up. So all this information is available. Um, with a lot of the license levels people have, it, it, you could just ask us and we'd pull it in for you. Um, anyone that would maintain their own account, you'd be able to do this yourself, but we'd always be happy to help. But if you kind of know what you want to look for, um, we can help you find things. We can do the searches or if you, if you actually found it yourself, uh, we would add things into, into ArcMap. So all this stuff is compatible with, with the software that, that we use. Um, Pennsylvania and a lot of other states, they'd have like imagery, imagery data, and this would go back. I mean, there's 2010 imagery. Some of it's more local, like county or town. So um, normally when we're doing our projects, we'll scour these sites to see what the, so we can find the best imagery for you, um, whether that's like a state imagery, county imagery or, or whatever. There's hydrology layers. So. Uh, I don't know. There's so it's kind of messy. There's a Pennsylvania water quality database. Base, so, I mean, most of this stuff wouldn't be relevant to you, but so you kind of have to know what you're searching for. Look around for it. I don't know different boundaries, um, things like that. And again, you can search search for things by keywords. Um, search by the provider, Pennsylvania, through the site. Um, we have an imagery navigator and download tool so we'll often go into this site too and they have the different imagery options then you can download them here or stream them into the websites too so yeah again that, this is something that we normally do with all our projects is try to get you the best imagery we can find because it, it can vary depending where you're at and this is the state of maine's geo library <clears throat> so i think this is like a, a, I don't know, a pretty big list of a whole bunch of stuff Again, not all of it would be useful for you. I don't know exactly what would be in every case, but I don't know, maybe you want to show the lobster conservation areas on your water map. For whatever reason, we could we could throw stuff like that in here. Um, I guess, Wade, we talked earlier, I know you, you maybe gave some examples of some other types of layers that would be interesting in Maine, um, some coastal, coastal flooding and, and flood maps and stuff like that I'm going to show, but I think that right. should all be available here. Shoreland zoning locally um, that varies from municipality to municipality. So those layers are available, but they're not always as accurate as they could be. Um, but it, it all helps. It all gives some some planning perspective when you're, especially for treatment plants that are along water courses, it gives an, an understanding of um, where to go talk to the municipality to find out what those ordinances will allow for, for, for upgrades or for continued service for your treatment yeah. plan. Okay. Yeah. And when you look at these, I think these are hosted by the state of Maine. I think it'd probably be uh, pretty good data. I think when you're looking at things publicly, uh, I'll show you how you can search RTS online for things. So you just got to make sure you're, you're using a good source. You can generally find that out and you, the stuff you're bringing in if you if you're using it for i don't know whatever purposes make sure it's it's coming from a good source it's accurate data it's updated and you can usually find that kind of information out otherwise maybe just you're just using it as a reference um until you find something better but yeah, there's, thing, i mean yeah go ahead seth um a, a lot of folks are looking at mapping and seeing the pretty flowered green map and saying that's the one we want to use um, and then you get the most updated one and it's it looks like um, the apocalypse has hit <laughs> but that from an accuracy perspective and when you zoom into that map the newer updated versions give you a more accurate and visible view of the asset that you're looking for whereas the leafy green pretty one you can't see underneath that tree to see how close the house is or how close the utility pole is um, as you can with the more updated, um, not as not as pretty uh, maps that are available. Yeah, and 
It's a good point. And I, I remember, and you have to, I guess, be aware, at least on our end too, like of, of the customer. And I forget how this one loads up automatically, but, um, you know, it's, we can help you. I mean, sometimes with a lot of information, I remember someone described it like a Star Trek or something with, I don't know, all the layers that were turned on and um, maybe you just get overwhelmed. So we can help you make it. Uh, I mean, there's some things we can do on our end with the symbols and when things turn on and off and, and all that, that might make it more usable for you. And, and we can do some different things here with the grouping layers. It, I kind of have an example next, but it's a good point. Yeah, you just have to be aware of what you have check the sources and the accuracy and at least on our end, we can make things look a little bit prettier and, and usable for you. There's a lot of stuff. I mean, maybe working with us was your first like intro into GIS. So your focus has been on water and wastewater, but I mean, just so you're aware there's, there's GIS data about, I don't know, anything in the world that you could potentially find if you want to get, if you care about, I don't know where the fire stations are, you, which you probably know already, but like that stuff is available on here. If you want their own hospitals for whatever reason. Um, yeah, I think at, at every single level, county, state, federal, there's, I guess the, the trend is to make more information publicly available and accessible. So that's why you see all these crazy, crazy data layers on here. If you want to know where the Red Cross facilities are, I mean, that's kind of the push is to make, make information public. Um, and then just try to figure out if, if there's scenarios or reasons why we could incorporate it to your maps. Yeah, all kinds of stuff on this one too. They also have a list of web applications and web maps. So not, not the data, well, these would include the data, but these would be what the, the online maps would be about. Um, so yeah, I don't know if there's anything interesting here, here to look at. You'd open one of these up, it's going to be kind of a map that you're used to seeing in a similar style. This one's about beaches. I don't know, shoreline vegetation, dune changes, whatever, along coastal Maine. So just trying to get through the point. There's a lot of data out there. You know, 99.9 of, of it. All of that changed yesterday. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so some of the stuff would be updated in, in real time almost or, or in real time. Um, I don't know. Yeah, you have to kind of explore what, what kind of data you're looking for. See, see when it gets updated with, with some of this kind of stuff um, to see if it's useful. But yeah, just to get the overall point into yeah, there's there's a lot of data. 99.9% .9 of it probably isn't relevant, but maybe there's some things we could add to your map that could help you out. Um, uh, my colleague Adam had started work on this. He wasn't able to make the training today, so. I don't know if we got to where, where he was happy with it. And I thought Mount Pocono was going to be on the call. So I focused into his area. Uh, so we have a whole bunch of different layers available from ArcGIS.com. I'll show you how we can find these and add them. And if you have your own GIS account, these are things you could do on your own too. But just some like half interesting ones was uh, weather watches and warnings. So there's uh, um, the way these are grouped, some of these layers are turned off, so nothing like right in Mount Pocono, but if I zoom out, I think we'll find something. So across the, the border in New Jersey, I can click over here and I can see there's a flood, a flood warning in effect. Um, looks like all day today in Morris and Somerset counties. So this is like real time information that if these were on your maps and there was, you know, your system was right here, you'd be able to see your water utility data in the background but then the, the the warnings would come on. So thankfully no warnings in Mount Pocono today. And I can zoom out, there's some stuff going on in Connecticut and Massachusetts and all that. Um, maybe another flood watch here and I'll see if I can pull up the legend. It's gone a little slow, but um, yeah, here's like the weather warnings and watches what these what the colors mean you can click on them and, and pull up the pop-up but these are the kind of warnings that they're tracking so i think some of this stuff with flooding and rain and or even i don't know if you if you care about a tornado watch coming towards you or a winter storm warning that stuff that these these are being updated in real time they can get added to your maps um so that's kind of useful where i'm at down here we have some kind of warning a, a flood warning and it's kind of nice that they give some information and forget who this must be. Yeah, okay, National Weather Service, NOAA, 
puts this out, I can click and see that warning, you know, without going, having to go to the site originally. So we can put all the weather information right here too. I thought that's kind of neat. I'll bookmark and go back to Mount Pocono. So I like the weather watches and warnings. I've seen things, I don't think we have good examples, but um, more of a weather radar. And with some of these, like there's like a, a play button and it'll show the changes, like, like how a weather radar changes um, over time. So with the GIS, if you have the right kind of data, you, yeah, you can show things over time. It'll, it'll show like a, a clip of that happening. But these are the kind of weather events through this layer that we found from the National Weather Service. That's kind of neat. I'll switch gears here. This is this is different. Um, but Esri, I think I think it's Esri that puts this out, but it's more like demographic information, and this is kind of just more for fun. Um, I know sometimes you might have to look up dem demographic information with population, incomes, and things like that. Um, this could just give you, I don't know, if it's more for entertainment purposes. But like, let me pull up the legend. Bear with me. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll show you in a second. But I can click on one of these colors and it'll tell you like a little bit about the demographics. So that, it must be SK. So it's a Pennsylvania block group, so like a census um, designated layer. And I think you can even do these at um, different levels like state or town. Uh, or county, but for this one, this yellow, they're calling it a parks and rec kind of area. The segment is part of the Gen X urban life mode summary group. So they're they're summarizing these groups, these block groups, into different descriptions. This one's I don't know, uh, parks and rec Gen X urban life mode summary group. I guess they get that from from these characteristics. So there's 1,200 people that live there, median age 38. There's a diversity index. I'm sure if you click there, it tells you what it means. Uh, medium household income and disposable income. And then it shows like different pie charts on, this looks like the, the makeup of the population. And then information on where they got this information. And you can click around. Um, I don't know, they call this one family landscapes. What else do we got here? I think this one's like more rural. Resort dwellers, cozy, cozy country living. Um, so the median age here is higher, not as diverse, and maybe a smaller population. So it's just interesting if you want to look at your customers this way to see what these are the different categories there, um, whether that's interesting to view or not. Um, that's just some some random data that you're able to pull up as well then i don't know if i can see this at a different level yes yeah, so i guess you can look at it i believe per county so similarly like center county pennsylvania where this is where penn state's at let's see what they got they got scholars and patriots for whatever reason it's a younger younger median age um so anyway maybe a first start on looking at income data Switching gears, I mean, just to show you some random things. Here's wildfires. Um, not a whole lot going on in Pennsylvania. You can click on this one in, out in the Allegheny National Forest. I can see what's happening here. Maybe it's hard, always hard to tell what's going on. It looks like it's still current. I don't know if anything's still burning or whatever. I found another one that had like, uh, I don't know if it'll show you, but like the perimeter of it, this one looked pretty small. I don't know if there's anything else going on in the Northeast. Something in Massachusetts, a small wildfire. I don't know, maybe they happen in, in Maine, northern Maine, where, where Wade and Will are at. But um, yeah, just some crazy information that, that could get added to your maps. There's some real time weather data. Let's see what this looks like. Uh, this is this is real time. I didn't spend a lot of time looking at this yet, but uh, if we click on where we're at, It'll tell you how much precip pre precipitation is in the forecast. Um, they have different time frames for some of these. This is like on the 13th, and if I flip, it'll go to the 12th. So maybe if you're on a wastewater system, you, you might care about 
seeing this information. Um, and this comes from the National Weather Service, so probably half reliable. And they can show this a couple of different ways. Here's accumulation by time. We'll see what that looks like. Similar. And then total total amounts. So in 72 hours, they're, they're going to get an inch to an inch and a half of rain. These are kind of neat. Um, like we've, I'm sure you've seen pop-ups when you click on any of your points. Um, if I pull up like Caribou, you know, generally we show like addresses, pictures, and then a bunch of the data related to it. These are kind of neat, just the way they they're able to summarize the data here. Um, they're the ones that want to set this pop up up, but like you, we brought this data in and it it appears pretty neat. Um, right here, it summarizes everything. So like we don't have to touch any of that on our end. So different ways you can check the weather, wildfires, demographics, warnings. And then this information here, um, this is probably half related to the work you guys do, but uh, flooding, what are we looking at? Flood hazard areas. And you can pull up a legend or see what this stuff means. So the purple just means a 1% chance of flooding. So flood zones, um, flood ways. Various information there, flooding frequencies. This area is frequent. So you kind of know what you're looking at. We, we could spend some time digging into all this. I just want to show an overview. But this area is marked as occasional um, by whoever the SSURGO is, This where this data comes from. Got some better soil data here. Um, and I could show you a legend that would explain these colors, but they have pretty good pop-ups. I'll tell you what they mean. I guess this is looking at the drainage class of things. I don't know if that's anything you'd ever look at in the, the wastewater world, but uh, this is available water storage. Again, I don't know if this relates to you guys at all or not, but this tells you like the water storage in the top 150 centimeters. Soil potential, subsidence. Yeah, I don't even know what this stuff means, but I mean, there's a whole lot of different soil categories we can look at here. Um, you could play around with this stuff, see what potentially could be useful to you. And again, like this kind of data could just get transferred over real easily into any of your maps. So that's stuff kind of at a federal level. I'm not exactly sure who I meant to, or it's, I guess it's from the USDA, but some soil information. Water bodies, I, I can see that these could be useful and it's loading up here. You refresh the page real quick. Any, any questions, comments? Is any of this stuff like half interesting? Is it? I don't know if it would have a use for you guys or, or not. Any thoughts, Wade? Is it all just I've, not uh, relevant enough for you? Or do you think you'd ever find a use for, for anything? I have a question. Yeah, Karen. Um, hi. So how would our system get access to this public information? And maybe you said that at the beginning, but I didn't catch it. Uh, I'm sorry. Where are you from, Karen? I'm from Systems Design Engineering, and my client is Klein Township Municipal Authority. So we're oh, water. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm going to show you. Um, if the stuff we're showing here is all through ArcGIS Online, I'll show you in a second how we can search for things and add them on here. Um, with us, Klein Township, like a couple other systems on here, you just have that mobile worker. Um, so you, you wouldn't be able to, I don't think you can even search for things. Um, but, but I guess you'll have an idea of what can be added. Um, and then from your maps, this is what we could add for you. But if you guys would have your own GIS account and you're able to like create maps like this and well, search the ArcGIS online database, then you could add things on. I think Klein can um, add things to their own local um, system. Like they can add water lines, they can add curb boxes, they can add fire hydrants, right? 
Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the yeah, licenses are so, confusing. Do they not have a license that, on their own? No, I mean, no, they're paying no, for something. Yeah, so you, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, Klein has a mobile worker license. So that lets you add in new data points. You can edit data points. You can delete data points. Like you can add curb stops in. You can add hydrants. You can delete them. You can change the information on those curb stops. But like if Klein Township wanted to GPS all the street signs in the town, you could do it, but you couldn't add the layer in. Like you couldn't add the street sign layer in. We would do that, but then you could mess with the data. Um, similarly to this, like you wouldn't be able to add the flood layer in. We could, then you could use it. Um, okay, so as their engineer, and like I want to do grant writing for them, and I want to be able to do, like go down some streets and and measure some linear footage and and get the locations of curb boxes and fire hydrants, um, so I can do some planning and grant writing. How do they share that with me? Yeah, so. Klein Township would be similar to like how Caribou is set up. <clears throat> um, and, and with this map, yeah, you can zoom in and get curb stop locations. They have, I haven't seen this yet, but they have tables right here. You get like export this data with curb stops and the locations. Um, well, they could share in a variety of ways. I mean, first of all, you, they could just ask us, hey, could you share everything with Karen? We could get you the data. I mean, depending on what you're GIS um, we have, infrastructure um, look like. Esri arc map. We have arc map in house. Okay, yeah. So we could do it a variety of ways. So that means you probably have your own ArcGIS Online license. So we could <clears throat> add you to a group that you could see this secure securely. So these maps are locked down with username and password, but we could share this with with you or your engineering company. Alternatively, yeah. like we could give you the data in like a shape file or a file geo database that you could pull it up yourself. So yeah, there's a variety of ways we could share that information with you. Okay, so ARC <clears> have <throat> to do that, or can KTMA do that on their own? Um, like, do we have to work through ARC every time we want to do something with KTMA? It depends what you want to do. Um, if you guys would be shared in part of the group that would have access to this, like you guys could edit the data, add new points in, make changes. Um, but if you want like the full copy of the data, I don't think you can do that at your license at, at the, the KTMA license level. Like if you want all the data yourself, so you have your own copy of it, we'd probably just have to share that with you. I, I, I don't think I'd have to see, but yeah, I'm not sure if we can do that through a group or not, but yeah, so like you could access they K own their own data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, so we we're set up we have it's called a multi-tenant account so we host the data and then ktma is part of what is called a multi-tenant account so it's all stored on our account i mean i guess we own it but like i mean you're partial owners too we're not going to keep it hostage we don't hold it from you we'll share it with anyone i think we'd only be restricted from like what the software allows us to do um so yeah so we're not gonna i mean i guess we're the data owners but yeah i mean it's a kind of a shared custody thing um but yeah i mean we'll, we're open to sharing and giving it out to how the utility wants um and, and yeah we would only be restricted um by our limitations with the software not any kind of internal policy would you ever share uh, it with I, anybody without our knowledge uh no certainly not um because it, yeah, it, 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 we would certainly need i'm sorry there's what safety issues with like well locations and tank locations oh yeah no no we certainly agree with that and yeah that's why the data the data is secure it's it's not publicly available to anyone with the gis license you would have to be included with a group or if we're sharing that data we would not do it without the, the utilities knowledge and, and and that's i mean normally that's like an engineer might want the data and we always double check with the utility hey do you, do you mind if we share it and like 99 percent of the time that they're fine with that um because they've been talking with the, the engineer anyway but yeah, we, we want to share it with any Joe Schmo. We don't share it with anyone else. We don't share it with other RCAP. We, we don't even share it with everyone in RCAP. It's, it's, it's limited to the people that would need to see it. So yeah, we, we definitely wouldn't give it to anyone without um, the blessing of the utility. Okay, so maybe, maybe offline, maybe we sh need to have a conversation on how to share it with, with us so that we can be useful and, and write grants for them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We definitely would want you guys to have access to this if uh, if you need it or want it. 
Um, yeah, it's just half complicated because there are a variety of ways you can share things. So, um, yeah, we can figure out the best thing for you and you're happy to do that. And, uh, yeah, we could talk afterwards and okay. see what we can do. But yeah, okay. at a minimum, like you could have access to view this map securely. Um, we could add you into that group. And then again, if you'd want to have an offline copy of all the data, happy to share that too. Okay. And then I guess the purpose of this um, webinar here is how to get access to publicly um, available data, like within their county or something like that. Yeah. So uh, and yeah. can they, I just can want they to bring show that up. into their, like, can they say the county no, has parcel maps? Can they put that on top of this so that they can see um, their water lines in relationship to the parcel maps? Yeah, yeah, and that that's kind of what I'm getting at is anything I'm showing you today, the utility data sh would be able to get overlaid on it uh, for the most part, or we would work to do that. It, parcels is one that we normally find. Um, sometimes you have to ask the county for those sometimes so we can just find them ourselves. But yeah, that's that's exactly right. And I'm sorry, this example here doesn't have the parcels, but um, a lot of our, and I can pull up a map that does, but um, yeah, that that's something that we we normally do or we typically do and, and, and can do for ktma but yeah so parcels is i mean a good example of what everyone would probably want on their map some of this other stuff probably not but i just want to get everyone thinking about what's available out there and not that you guys the, like the license ktma has they can't do it but we can um, we could add, we could add it for them and, and it's a pretty easy process so yeah, anything I'm showing here, if you'd want to get it on a KTMA map, if Caribou would want to get that stuff included, we could add it on. And then they would see it the next time they, they log in? Yep, yep. So yeah, if you're like, I really like that USA wetlands layer, we could get that into KTMA's map in, in two minutes. Really easy to do. Well then, I don't know if there's any other Pennsylvania water systems in this webinar, but can we get, how would we get um, the lead and copper, the lead service line inventory is, is the big thing coming up um, later this year. It's due to DEP, but it would nice, it would be nice if we can get that information into the GIS and how would we do that? Yeah, um, maybe we could talk separately, Karen. We've we've had sure. a, a couple of sessions yeah. on that, but uh, yeah, we'd be happy to talk with you and maybe even um, help work with you and KTMA on that. Um, like Esri does have a lead service line solution, they call it. We're we're working with a lot of systems on that. Um, certainly, parcel information is critical, especially if you can get the home year built. Um, to get some of the low hanging fruit, um, you know, to identify what's old, what's new, what could have lead, what doesn't. And then, I mean, there's like special symbology from Esri that's um, shows what the material is on the utility side and the customer side, and then ways that you can manage that inventory um, through the GIS. Um, I know I don't know if you looked at Pennsylvania spreadsheet. It is a little, it, it's the yeah. most complicated one that I've dealt with. It's, but it's they horrible. Do, yeah, well, they, they, I mean, so you know, they have an alternative form that is not as horrible um, that that we're, that we're using for the GIS. So instead of using like the one by one entries in Pennsylvania, um, you can use the alternative form. It's going to work better with the GIS. We can do exports out that can get copy and paste straight to the Pennsylvania form and um, then then submitted through the DEP process. Um, so that's what we've been working on on our end. So we're happy to talk with you offline about potential yeah. ways we can help Klein Township with that. There's yeah really cool stuff we could show with that, though. Um, yeah, that would be great. And sorry, I didn't mean to hijack your webinar. But, no, it's all good stuff. I'll reach out to you then. I, I know we've, I think, communicated before, so yep, happy to yep, talk about yep. any of this stuff later with you. But anyway, similar to how we can add in the parcels for lead service line stuff, any of this information we showed all day today most likely can get added to your maps, and, and certainly the stuff you're seeing on the screen now. Um, so here's some, uh, what's this? Uh, I guess land use or land types, different types, of, I don't know, they call them that a wetland. Um, so that was, that was, that was the more federal data. We got some state level stuff. Sorry, I'm showing a lot of Pennsylvania stuff. 
Um, Seth, does the addition of of the these layers slow down the process when you're trying to access the platform? Or I mean, maybe all? if you throw. I mean, it depends. Maybe if you're throwing everything on here, but we would turn like maybe by default you just turn some of the stuff off. There's different ways we could do it, or, or maybe like you'd want a whole separate map that, like maybe 90% of the time you're just looking at utility map. You don't want to see all the extra stuff. Um, we could make you a separate map that would include the water stuff, but then include all these other layers too. So we could create additional maps for you. There's a lot of things we could do if, if that was an issue. Like turn things on and off by default. The way some of these are like set up, like if you zoom out, it's not on here, but when you zoom on it, and it is. Um, but I mean, there is the potential for it to slow, especially if you're bringing in national data sets. But there's, I think, some things we could do to mitigate that problem. So I wouldn't foresee it being a huge issue. Um, is it like this stuff, I guess I'm only turning on one thing at a time where it looks too crazy, but it's it's moving okay even with the, the webinar going here. GIS is amazing. It's a it's an asset that people don't even I shouldn't say people as a general term, but it, it it's incredible what it can do. Um, down to marking where each book is in your library if you need that. Uh, incredible, incredible program. This, yeah, and this right here, I can pull up the legend. But th there's better examples, but it's the type of road. Um, so maybe this could be like useful because I know some utilities maybe I don't know, you might not take care of this, the state owned roads or the interstates, but you want to know where your, your local roads are. So there's different, this isn't the best example, but it shows a couple categories for streets. We can normally find stuff like that. Um, and then this one is, I think I like the pop up maybe the land use. So oh, here's the legend the land use in it. They have a time series. I guess you could hit play. I didn't get it to work, but might might show land use over time. But let's just see. Like in the cities, it's um, built ground, and you can see where there's trees or a forested area. Uh, yeah, the pop-up's not that great, but I mean, it just tells you what what the land use is. That I don't know. Maybe these these would be good for funding applications or grants or things like that to be able to see this kind of data. So I guess that's kind of the, the highlight of the things I had prepared to show again, like you're limited to your imagination, what's available. But if you had, if you'd have the right kind of a license, so if you'd have your own account, like Mount Pocono, they're not on here, but like they have their own separate account. Or if you have something what's called a creator license, that's a, a step higher than the mobile workers. It's a little more expensive, but you can search RTS online for layers. And that's how I added all this stuff in so far. So when you do this, you can start search RTS online, and then there's like every publicly available piece of GIS data in the world would be would be in here if it, if it would be shared this way. So you could do things like weather, search a category. You can kind of flip through and let me sorry, let me turn this off and I'll show you how we can mess around with it then. So you could look at weather. Just searching like weather, and um, you can you can see the source like Esri or Esri Canada. Sometimes there's so this is where you're checking the source to make sure the stuff you're getting is good. Um, sometimes it's not going to be related to what you have, like Iowa Department of Transportation. It might not cover the Northeast up here. Weather watches and warnings. I think that's the one we have here. But you can like add things on, um, see if it's useful or not. If you don't want it, you can just remove it. So this is what we do. This is, I mean, for hey Karen or uh, Mike, what county's Klein in? They're in Schuylkill County, right on the and is that the, on the border with um, Carbon County and just below how do you spell, uh, Luzerne how County. How do you spell Schuylkill? Uh, S C H U Y L K I L L. Yeah, so the, uh, whoever this person is, they always have a lot of parcels. That's uh, not working. Yes. Yeah, so this so is how we find. He has a parcel map. 
Carbon County yeah. has a parcel map. So that, I mean, this is like the easiest way we can just add things in. We search this way. Carbon might be a little more rural. So I don't know if they would have theirs. Um, and there, but yeah, the, the county would have them. If we can't find them here, we can add them there. Um, where I live, probably available. But yeah, whoever this what this GIS developer guy. I don't know why it's not working. Normally it works. Uh, but yeah, we can just but add parcels in. Berks this County works. has a parcel. Yeah. So I mean, they just go like this. This is. Uh, I guess it looks okay. We can change the symbol with it. We'll see what kind of information is available. Sometimes more than others, we can customize the pop-ups here. But yeah, if there's information that I don't know, if you want like home or building that's not here, we might just have to ask the county. And again, they normally don't charge utilities for that data, but maybe the regular Joe Schmo they would. But yeah, sometimes we'll like we'll find address points too. Um, I don't know, it's not working, but um, we'll add those two to just give you the address at every location as well. But yeah, this is what we do. We start searches online. It can be, I don't know, if you want to look up income and data, search here. Like Esri has some some sources here. So you kind of know what you're looking for because there's so much out there. You got to be specific. There's ways you can filter by the map area. That doesn't always seem to work, but you can filter, yeah, information that would show up where your, where your screen is shown at. Um, I don't know, there's some median household income data here and again it should be like what similar to the census or it could be separate data so you just have to be careful what you're looking for but yeah there's so much stuff out there if you i don't know if anyone has an idea or a crazy thought you, you can you know put that kind of stuff in uh, yeah pretty much any any topic you can think of there's usually data this might be like school districts for the country so there's municipal boundaries county boundaries state boundaries anything you want is probably available here in arcgis online there's also something called the esri living atlas um i think it's similar i don't know exactly how it's different than arcgis online search but um uh, national water model maximum flow i don't i don't know what this is but there's just so much stuff out there that you know, if, there, if there's things that you're interested in, again, reach out and here's the, the creek by my house. Well, there's the school district. Going going for grants nowadays, the big buzzword is environmental justice areas. And I think that's mapped. That might be useful. Yeah, it is. I'll show that. that that's, oh, thank you. I should have brought that up. Yeah, there's a lot of, I'll, I'll pull those up because that is public and we pulled them into maps. Um, the EPA does have like maps, but yeah, you can pull in their data then. But this is kind of neat. Um, for the creeks, the highest water level is happening now. Here's the flow. Um, then it, and it tells you the source and all that. So like that kind of stuff is on here. It's updated in real time. Um, yeah, the environmental justice, that's a great one I should have thought of. So I think this is this is the one that the EPA website would be looking at. Um, let me turn off some stuff. So there's a bunch of different indices they're using or um, things they're tracking with environmental justice. A lot of them are turned off by default. But they're pretty simple. I think I could, and these are the different categories and things they're looking at. <clears throat> but yeah, some, I know, yeah, some some grants or funding that you're going for, they, I don't know, you score more points if, if you're in one of these EJ areas. Um, pop-ups don't, and maybe there's no pop-ups for them. I thought the EPA website might have, I'll, I'll pull that up real quick. There's some with, I thought like it, they have some point locations. So it'd show you, show you like a super fun site and things like that. But yeah, the ton of information here with all these different areas. Um, let's see if I can find the map.
see, I've, I've used this before. It's Rollinsford. Um, see if I can figure out how to make it work quick. I don't know. For, so I could I made it air toxics. Um, you can click there. It'll, it'll tell you the indexes. Um, I don't know. Super fun proximity. Yes. Yeah. So this is an interesting point too. If, if you ever want to look for this information, I forget. I don't know if Wade would remember. We were just looking at this stuff before when we were done some of our project planning, and it asked for if it was an environmental justice site or. I forget what other category I mentioned, um, but I think we looked at some other, like public map to pull up information. But yeah, so all this information here on the, this map, <clears throat> I believe is what I just put into the GIS. So if you'd want like this information for whatever reason in the background of your curb stops, we could do stuff like that. And you can change the background. There was one I thought you could like, I guess there's, I don't know, some kind of reporting tool here on this one. Uh, I don't know how it all works. So you could you could pick a place and then it would give you like a full summary of what was happening there as well. So I can't make it work real quick. Or maybe I can, I don't know. Oh, okay, you can generate a report. Oh yeah, I think we've done things like this before. So uh, I picked this point here and then I can run through everything and see what's going on. And yeah, I don't know how often the, the regular utility would be looking at this, but I can I can see maybe in carrying your position for funding applications, that's what we've used it before. Um, but I mean, interesting information to, to know anyway about where you live. Um, but anyway, happy to, I guess we're at our, our hour now. <clears throat> happy to, uh, last thing, last thing real quick. But yeah, just living out. Let's hear some things just by default. I think they show some popular things at, at the top here, but I mean, slopes. Oh, I want to show you, there's like contour maps, maybe useful for wastewater just to see slopes, elevation slopes and things like that. That was part of the, there in the Tioga County one. But like elevation data, stuff like that, we can usually find, yeah, um, forest types, anything, anything is available. Again, we can help you get this stuff into your um, your maps if you want it. Um, but yeah, that's that. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Karen would be happy to talk with you separately on any of this stuff. I, I do have a two o'clock meeting, so I'll have to jump here soon. But uh Thanks for attending. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Um, we can look at your license, see see the process we need to um, add any add this in, whether you can do it yourself or you need our our assistance with it. And and that's just based on the license level, whether you're able to do that. But yeah, Karen, I'll reach out to you to you and Michael, um, and we'll go from there. Lots we can do with this stuff, lead service line stuff. We're 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 real busy with. Um, thanks for attending. Yeah, Mike, I gotta thank catch you, up Sally. with you sometime. Always good to see Andrew's name. Nice meeting you, Will. Taylor that was good, Sally. Yep. See you guys. Thank you, Sally. Bye.